Thank you, Sabrina. And thank you all for coming again. Before we introduce our marine management plan for the Sargasso Sea, I'd first like to start with a definition and explanation for what marine spatial planning is. It's the process to designate marine areas to achieve ecological, economic, and social objectives. Now this is slightly different from marine protected areas, which we've already heard a little bit about, because marine protected areas can be a part of marine spatial planning. But why is this important? Well, if we think about it as a Sargasso Sea and wanting to manage the entire area, that's a very daunting task. But think about this as the United States, for example. That's also a daunting task. But when we break it down into states and then counties, we can focus on the needs of those areas. This is the same thing in the Sargasso Sea. If we can select areas and look at the needs of those areas, then we can better manage the Sargasso Sea. So how did we get from this, our original management plan, <laughs> on a whiteboard with all of the needs, to this? A map that shows exactly where we want to focus our efforts. And a management plan for those select areas, as well as the entire Sargasso Sea. Well, this process took one discussion circle, 20 students, an incredible and determined professor, 12 weeks of research, which most of us 12 weeks ago were sitting where you're now sitting and had no idea what a marine protected area or marine spatial plan was. We had countless debates and finally we created a 125 page proposal for the management of the Sargasso Sea. If you'd like to take a look at it, there are some on the tables up here or it'll be out in the lobby later. But I think the most impressive thing is that our entire group went through a consensus-based process to agree on the management plan for the goals, objectives, areas, and all of the nuances that went into the plan. Now, I'd like to invite my good friend, Callie Schultz, up to tell us more. OK, so for our first goal, we <laughs> decided to protect and promote the conservation of biodiversity and natural resources in the Sargasso Sea by minimizing conflict between human uses and ecosystem health and encourage the sustainable use of ecosystem services. So this goal focused on managing the ecological aspects of the Sargasso Sea. The Sargassum communities of the Sargasso Sea, um, as we just heard about, support hundreds of economically and ecologically important species. The purpose of this goal is to minimize the human impacts of these ecosystems and to minimize the impacts on the species that rely on these ecosystems. So in order to save time, we have created a printout of all of our goals and objectives, which are in the packets and on the welcome table, because we will only discuss one example objective. However, all of the objectives are equally important. So our example objective for our first goal is to reduce the impacts of vessel traffic in the Sargasso Sea um, and habitats, including but not limited to high density areas of Sargasso. Our second goal is to facilitate sustainable use and sustainable economic development on the Sargasso Sea for Bermuda and the global economy. So the Sargasso Sea is utilized by nations around the world as a major source of fish. And one purpose of this goal is to address the issue of overfishing certain fish stocks and to promote the sustainable use of Sargasso Sea resources. One objective um, to work towards this goal is to develop sustainable fisheries of a broad range of species and find ways to promote use of underutilized fishery resources. Um, I will turn it over to Caroline to talk about our next two goals. Moving on to our third goal. This is our political goal. We want to work with stakeholders and within existing and new regional and international legal frameworks to manage the biological, ecological, and human needs of the Sargasso Sea. So to break this down a little bit, there are a lot of different entities with an interest in the Sargasso Sea and the many resources it contains. These entities in the statement are referred to as stakeholders, and these include the shipping and fishing industries, as well as nations such as Bermuda lying in the middle of the Sargasso Sea, as well as nations such as the US, UK, and Japan, which use the resources of the, of the Sargasso Sea. Additionally, there are a lot of different governance mechanisms in place for the Sargasso Sea. And we want to work within these existing governance mechanisms as well as think about 
new governance mechanisms for managing this important area. So one of the objectives to achieve this goal is to work towards long-term coordinated management of the Sargasso Sea by exploring the creation of a new regional ocean management organization established through an international treaty under the auspices of the United Nations. Our fourth and final goal looks to the future. We want to take into account future uses of the Sargasso Sea and anticipate changes in the short and the long term. When we are thinking about this management plan, we realize that if we create a management plan solely based on the current activities in the Sargasso Sea, it's really not effective because it takes so long to design and implement these management plans that we really need to think 5, 10, 20 plus years down the road. What's going to be happening then in the Sargasso Sea? So we want to take this into special consideration as we developed our management plan. One objective to achieve this goal is to promote scientific research on existing and proposed future human uses and sustainable use of genetic resources. So with these goals and objectives in mind, we selected some management areas. And these management areas were selected based on a series of criteria. These criteria include the presence of sargassum as well as seamounts, because these are two very important ecosystems in the Sargasso Sea. Additionally, we want to look at human uses, so we want to look at areas where there were high density fishing and shipping traffic. Additionally, we looked at the economic value of areas, so based on fisheries landings, and we looked at the location of areas in the high seas or areas beyond national jurisdiction. However, we have made recommendations for Bermuda's exclusive <coughs> economic zone. So, with all of these criteria in mind, the first management area that we selected is what we are calling the Western Management Area. And this, you can see, is shaded in purple. And it deliberately excludes Bermuda's exclusive economic zone, which you can see is outlined in blue. This area was selected because it is very heavily used by humans, and we believe that it's very important to conserve and manage this part of the Sargasso Sea. Next, we chose two clusters of seamounts. These are the New England seamounts and the Corner Rise seamounts, because these are such important ecosystems and need to be especially conserved and protected. Additionally, we selected four research stations. These include research stations within the clusters of seamounts, as well as a western and eastern research station, which you can see on the map. These lie on the same latitude. However, the western research station is in the highly used part of the Sargasso Sea versus the Eastern Research Station, which is in the less used part of the Sargasso Sea. So we selected these areas as a comparison to see what's going on in different parts of this important ecosystem. So you're going to hear a lot more about these management areas and our specific plans for each of these areas. And these are going to come through our policy working groups. So these include the governance and stakeholders group, the conservation targets group, conservation stressors group, as well as the fisheries and maritime traffic in the Sargasso Sea groups. Thank you. <laughs>